Hello and welcome to another episode of It Came From the Page. And today, I've decided to do a book tag. Bam, bam, bam. I know people do t tags on Tuesdays and today is a Wednesday. But I was feeling like crap yesterday, so I didn't do the tag yesterday and I'm said I'm doing it today. Sue me, okay? Please don't. I have no money. Please do not sue me. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so I've seen a few people doing this tag, which is really fun, and a way to admit, or not admit, if we have a problem. Uh, yes, and this is the book acquiring tag. This was originally made by Enter the Book. I first saw it because I saw Pax do it, and then Pax ended that video very diplomatically with the, if you want to do this video, you can. And I'm like, well... Nobody actually tags me in things, so I always take people up on the, if you want to do this, you should do this. To which, sometimes I'm worried that it's like, hey, this party's open to anyone. And then you show up and they're like, oh, not you. Oh, this party was open to everyone, quote unquote. But there was an asterisk there, and the asterisk was, not you. But then I realized that YouTube is a diplomatic program, and you choose to watch the video, so... That's your fault if you're watching this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, so the very first question is, do you plan your book purchases ahead or impulse buy? Oh, I'm an impulse buyer, 100%. I have some frame of reference to a plan, and almost always my plans fall fall to the wayside and it ends up being impulse buys a lot of times for the main reason of going to a thrift store you never know what you're going to find i go to value village a lot and that's where i find a lot of my finds and there is another bookstore in the same mall as the value village it's like a used bookstore so i go in there as well and i never know what i'm going to find when i enter so it's it's impulse buys a lot of times there and then every time i try to plan a buy via like online shopping it always sells out by the time i actually am able to buy it so i now i'm like i want this this is the lowest price i can find i'm gonna impulse buy it just boom i'm gonna do it i, I just gotta do it i just gotta press press play uh press purchase and the main reason i gotta impulse buy is just because when you're when you're collecting older vintage stuff there is a tendency for it to either be crazy varied as far as pricing goes like sometimes vintage horror sometimes vintage horror goes up in prices uh at, at random almost like books that w would be five dollars one day all of a sudden are five hundred dollars the next and that's not even an exaggeration what happens is half these places i have no idea how they plan out their prices on things so if you find something for a good price then you're gonna have to you know go and buy it because vintage horror is very much like a <laughs> you know it's 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 a it's very much like yeah well if you if you want it you may never see it ever again so you have to do it uh, loomis thinks i'm talking to him don't worry loomis you are always before the books um how do you decide what books to buy well here's where it comes into how this happens because impulse is, is the thing that helps make the decisions. Because I'll go, ooh, that's old, that's got a cool cover, I vaguely know of the author, I will buy this. Like It's like, oh, it's horror, it's from an era that I know I will not see again, I will buy this. If it's a com more common book, I will have some restraint and I'll be able to be like, I see this book all the time, I can just relax and pick it up another day. But that's the, really the way that I decide, how I decide to buy books is the, the scarcity and how varied I see the pricing. So, for example, I recently bought Killer Crabs by Guy N. Smith, which is the sequel to Night of the Crabs by Guy N. Smith, and part of the very, very long series of Killer Crab books by Guy N. Smith. And um, I got it for like 30 bucks, and everywhere else it was going for like upwards of $100. So it was really like, well, I found it at this price. I really shouldn't be spending this money right now, but I, but I'm never going to read this book unless I do that. <laughs> and it's it's funny because the two other like uh, books three and four of that series have been. What do you think? What do you think? Books three and four of that series have been archived on like archive.org, where there are like 
books that you can borrow and read the digital copies of those books. So that's cool. And all of Guy and Smith's books used to be available via ebooks, and then they stopped. They just can't like they, they. I think the publishing rights evaporated, so you no longer can get all the Guy and Smith books on ebooks, which is which sucks um, because. Uh, I had this thing where I bought uh, the first Night of the Crabs on on ebook, and it's no longer listed in the store. Luckily, it's still in my library as far as the Google goes. Uh, they, Google didn't remove it from the library as soon as they removed it from from sale, so that was nice. But I'm unable to buy any more Guy and Smith books the way I was planning on buying a lot of them because there really are like books you should be spending like five bucks on, and then reading once and throwing them away. But yeah, scarcity and price is really the way that I <laughs> decide. Three, question three. What is your philosophy on where you shop? Online versus in person, large versus small, physical, digital, or audio, new versus use, etc. It's all, it's all, all things, all to time. It all depends. So for example, <laughs> I mostly almost always prefer in person because it's just nice to have an in-person place to shop. Uh, and so when I go to my Valley Village, it's impersonal because that's a big store. But when I go to my little independent book stuff that has a bunch of used copies, they know me. And because they know me, they'll be like, hmm, we're going to put this aside. And then when he comes in, we're going to offer it to him. And then that's how I can get to, like, that's how I got the my copy of The Thing by Alan Dean Foster which is a very hard book to find. And my local bookstore put it aside and came up to me and was like, hey, are you interested in this? And I was like, yes. And then we worked out a deal kind of thing and and that kind of thing. So that's why in-person shopping is always the best, especially if it's like a little store because they get to know you, you have a relationship with them and they can help save you a lot of money. And they're just nice. It's always nice to just have another person who's like, this guy likes zebra horror books. So we're going to like put him aside and talk to him. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, now, I do a lot of online shopping. Um, I use thrift books a lot, uh, which is a total crapshoot uh, because you almost always just get whatever they say the book is, whatever shape they say the book in, is in, it almost always comes out as acceptable. Luckily uh, luckily enough, they have good customer service. So if you get like a really ratty book, but you bought a very good, you will get a refund, but you still have like a very ratty book. Especially, and especially when I'm buying books, I buy books to read. I don't buy them for display pieces. But <laughs> very ratty books um, could be sometimes the only ways that you get a hold of any of these vintage horror paperbacks. So it's always kind of a bummer when you go, ah, very good. Oh, my gosh. And then it's like falling apart as you read it. And you're like, well, I'll never find another one of these. So ratty books it is. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's kind of what it is. Um, four. What about little free libraries? What do you think of them? Have you used one? Why or why not? I am obsessed with little free libraries. I've made a video with little free libraries. The one that got the most views on my channel, surprisingly enough. I guess people just like looking at little free libraries. I love little free libraries. Use them all the time, like weekly. Like I go, I have about five or six. I go on walks through about five or six little free libraries around the city. And that's kind of what I do for like a, a walk and I will go and I'll take anything that I want from there. And then I also do make sure that like maybe once or once every two months or so, I'll go through my collection, see if there's anything that I should be donating, et cetera, et cetera, and put it back and, and refill. Cause I don't like to just take from little free libraries. I do like to like replenish them as I can. I would be interested to know how well I'm doing at that. I, 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 I think that I'm like pretty good as far as like, here's some books here give and take like i don't think i take more than i give but also with little free libraries it's like the, the reality is like they're free so like you don't have to very you don't have to obsess about that too much like someone put it here so that someone else could take it out and read it but it is just nice to like kind of replenish those kind of things so i love little free libraries and i use them and i refill them quite often how do you feel question five how do you feel about after acquiring a book do you share like in a book haul or diary sometimes i share i uh, so Anyone with any level of recurring pain in their life, um, anything that gives us little little dopamine rush, uh, it, it's valued highly. Uh, so that's what the book, book book buying gives me that little dopamine rush to just make me go like, oh yes, something good happened today, even though I'm in great pain for most of the day. 
I am still happy I found this book. So it's like one of those very little things. I used to collect movies all the time, um, and that was uh, a collection hobby that I got priced out of, essentially. So now I only buy movies like twice a year, which is the Black Friday sales and the halfway to Black Friday sales, because I can't afford it otherwise. Uh, when I had a, a, a decent paying job and everything was going hunky-dory in life, it was great. And then I had the stroke and I've been on disability and trying to figure out what the future will look like as far as if I'll ever be able to work full time again. We will see. But because of that, I have a lot less income and a lot less disposable income. So, um, you know, a lot of times it's more of uh, books are, are, are generally cheaper, not always, but generally cheaper to get used copies of and that kind of stuff. So a little dopamine rush to make me not hate my life. <laughs> Six, how do you feel looking at your books that haven't been read? Does it matter if it's currently a lot or a little amount? That's an interesting question. Uh, I love having like a library, essentially, that I, of stuff that I haven't read yet. And not because I never plan to read them, but because I plan to read them. So it, it always gives me a, a, a thrill to go through my shelf and pick out five or six books for the month and be like, hey, these are the books I'm going to read this month. And I have a lot of books and a lot of books that are unread. So I do plan on reading as many as I can before I die. And then whenever I shovel off this mortal coil, um, I plan to be buried with them. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I plan to have, I, I hope that someone else can get the same amount of enjoyment. And maybe there's a book in my collection that will never be read by anyone throughout the entire history of time, but they'll always plan on it. And that's the dream. It's that dream of going, I will read that book one day, even if you never do. <laughs> Seven, how do you decide what number of unread books is the right amount? I don't really think there is a number per se, but I think there's a space level per se, because I do need to be somewhat cognizant of my space. So if I get too many books, then that's whether they're read or unread, it, I can't. I can't live in a hoarding hoarding situation. I have like a very like specific way I sort my books. If I eventually run out of space, I either have to buy another. Sorry, my cat's doing something. I either have to. <laughs> no. I either have to, like, if I run out of space, I either have to um, change my storage habits or I have to get rid of some books. And ideally, it's a, it's a thing of like, oh, what books do I really love? And that's kind of how it goes. But it's only too many if I run out of space. So I got to be realistic for that. Eight, do you have a TBR game or process for reading them? It's interesting because every time I go, I'm not going to do a TBR anymore, and then I end, end up doing a TBR and, and enjoying it. So I do have a, a TBR list of types of books that I want to read during a certain month and kind of enjoying it. Like this month for Horror Mayhem, I didn't think I was going to do anything for June on the Range next month, but then I was like, hey, you know what? I want to read a bunch of Weird West books, and that would be very fun to do. So, you know, it's I, I do have a TBR uh, level <laughs> that I do to kind of to, to read them. Eight. Do you have a book buying problem? If so, what is the nature of it and can it be adjusted? I don't have a problem. No. No, I don't. What? No. I don't have a problem. You have a problem. Yes. Yes, I do. I mean, I would say it's not a problem problem because, like, I'm not in debt or anything like that, but I am pretty constantly broke just because, again, there's not as much expendable income in my life anymore. And books are one of the things that I can afford and not not go into debt, but also, you know, I probably spend a little bit too much money on books. I haven't done as much lately because I stopped drinking. And let me tell you, if you get a drop of wine in this mouth, um, all impulse buys, uh, you know, happen. <laughs> a very impulsive uh, buyer as soon as I have some alcohol. I mean, I used to buy my friends pretty much their groceries if I got drunk So in college. So, you know. Impulse buys, uh, they happen a lot. So since I stopped drinking uh, as much, um, 
it doesn't happen anymore so i can plan it out a little bit better so that does adjust it a little bit 10 uh was is to recommend tagging people uh you know if you want to be invited to participate in this by the least cool person at the party who probably wasn't really invited to the party in the first place then yeah i'm i'm yeah come on in come on in you can't be less cool if you show up and you want to do this tag you can't be less cool than taking my invitation because then you're like at the very worst you'd still be like the second least cool person at the party so i always get the least cool person at the party status so yeah if you want to hop on in and 11 is just a nice little note that says uh, know you are awesome just as you are being a book lover is amazing oh well isn't that sweet so yeah thank you guys for watching and uh, i would love to hear if you guys have book buying problems and if you have a solution <laughs> thank you guys have a great day bye